Illinois, American ski jumping champions Art Devlin and Merrill Barber renew their rivalry in the first Nord Ski Club tournament since the end of the war. Prepared for cold and looking for thrills, the crowd lines the ski jump. 98 jumpers compete in today's tournament. Control and form in the air, in landing and slowing to the finish, not just distance counts. Ski jumping is a hard taskmaster, demanding exactness in timing and balance. Sometimes it's the imperfect jump which provides the big thrill. America's growing band of winter sports enthusiasts will travel many miles to find good snow and sport like this. Now they watch Merrill Barber's winning leap of 176 feet and the follow through to a perfect finish. In London, the United Nations organization works tirelessly on the foundation for international cooperation. In order to set at rest any doubts which might linger in the minds of some delegates, Secretary Burns speaks for America. The great responsibility now rests upon each and every one of us. Upon the meeting of that responsibility depends the future of civilized humanity. 25 years ago, we in the United States we're not fully aware of our responsibility. But with others, we have learned from experience. This time, both the United States and its people are deeply conscious of their responsibility. This time, on their behalf, I pledge to the peace-loving people of the world our full and wholehearted cooperation. <laughs> Miss Greer Garson wins a motion picture magazine gold medal as most popular actress of 1945. Miss Garson won the honor in a vote by America's moving picture fans. And here is the famous actress in a few of the scenes from the film Valley of Decision, in which she starred with newcomer Gregory Peck. It was her excellent performance in this exacting role that won Miss Garson her award. The American motion picture industry is pledged to international cooperation in the interest of international goodwill. Millions of crows swoop down on the farmlands of Kansas in central United States. This year they have multiplied so fast that drastic measures must be taken to protect crops and property. The crows roost in such great numbers that their weight breaks treetops, sometimes killing the trees. The crows feed on harvested corn. Wheat is also ruined. The farmers counterattack with bombs, a stick of dynamite surrounded by five pounds of steel shot. Then the fuse completes this new anti-crow weapon. The bird bombs are set out, hung in trees near the top. The bombs are placed during the day while the birds are busy stealing and marauding. They are exploded at night after they come back to roost. Next 
morning, 150,000 dead crows. But literally millions of these black raiders still plague the Kansas farmers. A trio of shooting stars, United States Army jet-propelled planes are ready for a record transcontinental flight. Colonel Council checks with official timers at Long Beach, California. At 12.30 Eastern Time, Colonel Council climbs aboard. Three minutes later, the turbojet engines explode and the sleek propellerless plane, setting the pattern for the world of tomorrow, takes off into the mist. Ahead, 2,470 miles of cross-country flight, the distance from Moscow to Madrid. minutes and 26 seconds later, Colonel Council's plane reaches New York. His average speed, 585 miles an hour. The transcontinental record is broken by an hour and 13 minutes. At his headquarters in Chongqing, China, General George Marshall confers with General Wiedemeyer while they await the arrival of Chinese party leaders. First to be welcomed is General Chu Enlai, number two man of the Communist Party. But first to sign the truce is General Chang Chun, nationalist leader. Signing for the Communist Party, the general concludes an agreement after many years of discord between the two powerful Chinese factions. The agreement, which was reached with Ambassador Marshall as mediator, is announced to the people by Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. Representing the American government, General Marshall is ready to lend his good offices to achieve further Chinese national unity. Underway in the Caribbean Sea is the aircraft carrier Franklin D. Roosevelt. This 45,000-ton memorial to a great American president is on its first extended test cruise. Begun during the war, it is one of the three largest warships afloat. The wartime value of huge aircraft carriers like the Roosevelt will be determined by the Navy's experimental atom bombing of obsolete fleet units this spring and summer. Captain Apollo Suchek commands the carrier undergoing tests at sea. She's bound on a goodwill trip to Rio de Janeiro for the inauguration of Brazil's new president. Roosevelt turns gracefully into the wind for plane takeoffs, one of the most difficult and dangerous of carrier plane operations. The Franklin D. Roosevelt takes its place in the fleet, a fitting tribute to a gallant American.